Hello and welcome to Scanning Enumeration with Kali Linux. I am your instructor and host. I am Sean Philip Oriano, and I'm going to be taking you through this course on Scanning and Enumeration. So first let's talk a little bit about me, just to get this out of the way so you know where I'm coming from and my approach. Uh, I currently have over 25 years, in fact I'm coming up on 30 years working in IT and security. In fact, I have spent pretty much the whole time working in IT, but I have spent a majority of that time in IT with an emphasis on security and related issues. So IT has always been there, it's just that there's been a, a much greater focus for me on security. I've always been fascinated to, um, on that topic since I was a little kid. As far as how I, what I do in here, I have multiple years consulting. Uh, that includes training, writing, uh, creating new materials, developing new approaches, and working with clients in a lot of different capacities to address many different uh, solutions and problems. I have also authored multiple cybersecurity titles. I have been published uh, right now about 10 times uh, as far as books go. I have also had the pleasure of doing many videos. I have appeared on TV a couple times. I'm not anybody to look at. And then I've been on radio a couple times. Uh, and I also do public speaking and things like that relating to cybersecurity, which I enjoy. It gives me a nice diverse amount of things to do and gives me a lot of different exposures. I am also a cybersecurity specialist or cyber warfare specialist and strategist mean I now understand how to and recommend ways to adapt these technologies and the methods we're already using and how to use them on battlefield, the digital battlefield, the fifth domain, and how to defend you know, things like utility networks, military networks, things like that. So I've been, been kind of across the board and I've been around, you know, for a while. So let's get down to what you really came here for in this overview, which is the course overview. So let's talk about what's going to be covered in this specific uh, section. So what we're going to learn is, first of all, we are going to be talking about scanning enumeration. And to do that, we are going to be looking at, first of all, using Nmap and talk about what Nmap is. Uh, Nmap is a tool for doing, one of its most popular things to know for doing is doing what they call port scans. And we're going to talk about what ports are. So it does port scans, but it also can run scripts and do some other things. It's a very, very handy tool. It's kind of got this reputation of a Swiss of being a Swiss army knife. And you'll find that that's pretty much earned. And we can't even cover everything that it does within the context of this course, but we'll be using it a lot and coming back to it. We will then move on to talking about a utility, which is a script known as a Noom for Linux. We'll be talking about what that tool does, uh, different options it gives you, and how you know you are in a position where you can actually use that tool to target a system or host and extract information from it. You won't use it in every case, but there are some specific signs that you can get that tells you, hey, guess what? We can use Noom for Linux and see if we can get any traction uh, this way. Then we're going to take a look at something which is another port scanner, but it does something very unique as opposed to what Nmap does, it can actually identify services that are running on ports that aren't standard. So instead of someone running HTTP on port 80, if they ran it on a different port, trying to hide it from you, you could actually use this to identify what that service is, even if it's running on a different port. It can also do port scanning, things like that for you, but it's really specifically meant to fingerprint and find out information about services you may not uh, recognize. Then we are going to move to DNS and Noom. Uh, DNS and Noom is a way of working with DNS and extracting information from it, such as host names, uh, such as blocks of IP addresses. So it could get it could start giving us information on ranges to scan to flesh that out a bit more. You know, so a very handy tool. So we'll be making use of that and saving the output from it. And then finally, what we'll do is we'll move into a handy little scanner that we're going to be seeing again multiple times, you know, in our explorations with Kali Linux uh, called Nikto. 
Uh, Nikto is a scanner that is used to look at websites and web applications and determine the structure of it, plugins that are running, plus any one of a number of things that what we can do with this. And so we'll, just, we'll be kind of scratching the surface here and then we have to use it just for scanning and later on we'll do more with this utility you know, when we get deeper in. So, and you'll see that, that we'll come back around to some of these tools multiple times because we're using them in different ways with different sets of options. All right, so let's kind of nail down some prerequisites for you so you can get the enjoyment out of the course and the benefit out of the course that we intended for you to have when we created it. Okay, so first of all, what we are looking for is you really should have a knowledge uh, and experience with Linux. So we, uh, we can say that you have read stuff about Linux, but to really be useful at it, you have to have a working experience with it. It means that you've run commands in it and you haven't just clipped through the interface, you also have gone through and run commands and become comfortable with the command line because there will be a lot of command line stuff all throughout this course and as well as other components of this course. We also are looking for experience with networks and network administration. Those will absolutely reap dividends for you. Uh, when we start talking about networking and ports and services and drilling deeper and deeper and deeper, you have to have knowledge of networks so that information is going to make sense to you. So it's very important for you to have that or you better be willing to, if you don't have a strong networking knowledge that is, you better be ready to look up everything just to kind of cement your knowledge into it. That would be fine too, but it's, it's going to require that you're more dedicated and willing to apply yourself and learn that. We're also looking for intermediate to advanced knowledge of operating systems. That's telling you how you do some of the in-depth configuration, how you turn on, turn off services, uh, what uh, cert what happens with certain uh, ports when they're open, and how you can affect that by reconfiguring the operating system. So we really want to have an in-depth one, and the operating systems that are going to be useful for you to have in-depth understanding of are going to be uh, are going to be uh, Windows and Linux. Um, what about using Unix and the and the Mac OS and Android and all these other ones out there? Not denying that they're out there. It's just the, that Windows and Linux are the ones you're most likely going to run into. If you do have to use those other operating systems, there's nothing wrong with it. And there's something that is popular. So if that happens to be your thing, then it means that you're going to need to, after you learn how these tools work, you're going to have to run the same scans and probes against those systems to see what types of responses you get back to kind of look at it and say, okay, now I know what things are supposed to look like over, over here. But you can adapt all this stuff easily over to those other platforms. So we're just sticking with Windows and Linux to make things easy. Now, as I said, with the knowledge and experience with Linux, you do have to be comfortable with command line operation. Realistically, in Kali Linux, there's probably, and I'm ballparking it here, probably three quarters of the tools are only accessible through the command line. So if you aren't comfortable with command line and willing to open up a terminal and start typing only commands in there, you're not going to get that far with Kali Linux. You know, so we, we won't be able to help you here if you've got that fear of using the command line. So get you get used to doing that. Uh, play you know play around with the command line and. You'll, it'll get you more experience with it. Type the commands when you see them on screen and try variations of it. It'll get you comfortable with the command line if you aren't already so. And then finally, this isn't really a something you can learn or grab out of a book, but it is something that comes with experience, is an attention to detail. Every one of these tools dumps out a wealth of information, so to not get run over by the avalanche of information, you do have to be prepared to scan it with your eyeballs and get those little hidden gems that are hidden in there and be able to interpret them. So, but if you can't, don't have attention to detail and can't pick them out in the first place, you won't be able to interpret them. So, attention to detail, make sure you're not just glossing over the results when you see them come up, that you're really looking at them. Don't let yourself become too experienced to the point where 
you're ex you get you kind of puff your chest out and say, uh, okay, I can, I know what's going on here. Just a glance. You may very well do know that at a glance what's going on, but make sure in something critical like this, you're really scanning it and putting the effort in to make sure that you did really see everything, and your brain didn't tell you what you wanted to see. It told you what really is there. All right, so let's talk about what the objectives are here for this specific uh, course. Uh, what we have is we want to understand what uh, scanning enumeration are. So we're going to take a look at what that is and what that means to you. Uh, then we will take a look at how to interpret the information that comes out from those processes. After we've done that, then we will look at the details that come out of it, what's dumped out of these various commands. So you can get used to what's coming out the back end and what the general structure of it is and then what you can do with it. And then we we'll also go ahead and we will start talking about the relationships of information between the different processes that are in, run, do, happening in this phase as well as bringing in some of the information from our information gathering step, which would be the previous course, bringing some of that information up and saying, okay, this is how we use it here.